Okay, let's see if this works better. Yeah, <laughs> people are joining now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Fion, come and join me. And just ask to join. Uh, <laughs> you love the Christmas lights in the background. Yeah, you gotta have some vibe in your in your home studio, you know. No. <laughs> oh God, Fionn's saying it's not letting us join. Jesus. <laughs> Why is Fionn unable to join? This is going great. <laughs> I've invited you guys. I'm good, guys. How are you? Uh, <laughs> uh. You like the studio clips on my page? Thanks. I don't want to give too much away. All right, I'm just going to find them here. Oh my God. <laughs> Greetings from London. Which London? Is it Fion or Finn? It's Fion. <laughs> no, I leave these Christmas lights up all the time. So still when I'm working like late at night, there's a little more vibe than just like fucking light on, you know? Please come to Manila in the Philippines. Yeah, we did come once years ago. Um, it was a lot of fun. I should do a space-themed album. <laughs> Mariana's Trench, the final frontier. <laughs> Beyond, where are you guys? Guys in Fiam, you might want to uh, maybe leave and rejoin. Are we ever going to come back to Honolulu? I love Honolulu. Island of Ho Oahu, beautiful. 
<sighs> God, the amount of comments that are hair related, you guys. Did it hurt getting Benny tattooed in my ribs? Uh, tattoos on the bone do hurt a little more, yeah. Hi, wow, a lot of a lot of you guys in here. Uh, someone did the remix for Beyond Cool. I'm glowing. You're glowing. Uh, hi guys. Hi. Do another video with Ben Nectal. Ben, I love Ben. True story. I once uh once at the uh, Much Music Video Awards, I got Ben Nectal, who's a director friend of mine. Uh, one of our band members wasn't there to do press with us, so I just grabbed Ben and I pu pulled him in, and we ended up. Long story short, we got him really drunk and. Uh, he ended up in the trunk of a car. <laughs> it's changed. Oh, it's changed. Oh, okay. oh shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, just putting this back on the stand. Oh my gosh. So we tried to like angle. the internet experience of nightmares. Oh, hey, okay. So with the app update, they changed the way that you, of course, of course they did. They changed the way that you have to request. So we were like waiting for that little send a request thing to pop up and it just never mm -hmm. did. And we were like, how do I do this? So we had to Google it. So we and Googled it. Over here. Sorry about the wait. <laughs> that is- I just... swear the fucking internet is against us today. I curse. Totally I'm like, what? Like we just did this. Anyway, sorry about that. But um, yeah, where were we in our conversation before? The I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we were talking about songwriting and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about... Well, how about this? How about this? How, how did you guys start? How did you guys start? Start just making music in general? Yeah. Okay. Well, we started when we were 12. Um, my dad bought me a guitar and I started learning to play covers and stuff. You bought a, a guitar each. Yeah. My, Ran out a, a pink one and I had... Oh yeah, and we just, we just started like I don't know writing songs about crushes in school and stuff like that. And then my yeah. mom was like really took it seriously. I guess like because she saw the potential, so she was like, "Okay, like you want to be singers, like then you're gonna go busk." So we started busking in Granville Island to twelve, and then just getting gigs every weekend. It was really so. awesome. It was super fun. Yeah, and just like a great performance experience. But it was funny because when we were like really little, because we always wanted to be singers, but we wanted to be separate, like in a separate acts, because like our egos, like we just wanted, like we just did not want to be together. So we were like planning <laughs> on having two separate CDs. Like, <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah, our mom was like, no, like you gotta harmonize, you know, <laughs> play on that. <laughs> yeah, we actually started as like a country duo, mm -hmm. kind of just, we were big fans of Taylor Swift. So we went to Nashville and learned the songwriting craft in Nashville as teenagers. So that's kind Which of- Which is uh, like, what an awesome opportunity for young writers to get to go to those like songwriting circles in, mm -hmm. in Nashville. Cause like people take the songwriting fucking seriously in Nashville. <laughs> it's a machine in Nashville. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so, totally. yeah it's, it's really cool though. Oh. Passionate people though, which is, was cool to like witness at a young age and just kind of like, Absolutely. meet a lot of people that were doing the same thing as us. And like making a living doing it, you know, like people that were- Yeah, I always find, um, I, like I, I have lots of, of several friends that live in Nashville that are musicians and I always just think like that would be a really tough town to like try and get your start in because like there's so much competition because there's so many talented musicians like even if you just walk down that main street um downtown like even just the people busking are like so fucking badass like there's just like and every bar has like an awesome band playing in it at all times it's like uh, it's quite the music city it's pretty cool I remember being there and going into this giant like bar the honky thing. tonk uh, yeah. i don't know we were young so it couldn't have been a bar but it was like a restaurant and they had 
three bands playing on like a band per floor. It's pretty, it's and pretty we were sick. like, what the heck? Like this is crazy. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I have music all the time. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. But yeah, that is how we got our start. Now, we want to know. Yeah. How, how did you, you get your this? start with songwriting? Uh, well, um, everyone in my family is a musician, so like including like both sets of grandparents were musicians as well. And then my, both my parents are musicians. Um, and so my dad, my dad built this, this recording studio in Vancouver called Little Mountain Sound. Uh, and it was actually cause he was writing um, uh, jingles and advertising stuff. Like that's the kind of music that he was doing. Um, oh my God, hilariously. He wrote the theme for A&W Root Beer that like, bah, 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 bah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, like so he was he was writing stuff like that like he was he, that's what his job was and then um and then there was a young engineer working there who's like you know could we bring in some bands like on the weekend and stuff to start doing recordings and then that engineer turned out to be now super famed producer uh bob rock and like one of the first bands he brought in on the weekend was metallica and then the studio just blew up and so when i was a kid going to work with my dad was like it was like metallica was there or like aerosmith was there or acdc was there and then my mom was a singing teacher. So all of those people, when they were recording at my dad's studio, those singers would all be coming to our house and taking singing lessons from my mom. So for me, like, I, I literally thought that, like, all adults were just musicians when I was a kid. Like, I, I, thought, I thought that, like, you just grow up and you become a musician. Um, so, and I, same, same as you guys, like, I would sing with my sisters and, you know, harmonize with each other and stuff. And honestly, I just never really considered doing anything else. <laughs> Yeah, we feel the same way. Like we've always been beating the same drum since we were like really small. Yeah, and like because our dad was touring in an Irish show band. That's so how we tell us yeah. like the tour yeah. stories of like being on the road, and we were just always so enamored with the idea of tu touring as a band. So yeah. like we made our stuffed animals go on tour. Like you know, <laughs> we're a band. so we were just always the same. Like we're like, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Like you yeah. know, yeah. So it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's nice too, and I, I like I've always felt really grateful about that because you know as I went went through high school and stuff, and like a lot of my friends, you know, like not knowing what they wanted to do with their lives and stuff, and I, I, I mean, it, choosing to be a musician is a is a risky path because most musicians are not uh, don't end up doing it uh, to pay the bills because it's it's a hard fucking job. Um, it's and you gotta you gotta be lucky. Um, but the flip side was like, I always felt lucky because I never had that, like, not knowing what I wanted to do. Like, I always had that, like, direction of exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we, we are lucky in that sense, for sure. I think, just, yeah, yeah. Like, like, just to have a path that we, and a passion in general, mm -hmm. like, just to know what, it, like, us all knowing what our passion was from such a young age, like, not everybody has that. So I think that that's really, cool yeah, I'm, I'm more grateful about now to get yeah. older. Yeah. Um, also, if you're a creative person, like you never get bored because you can yeah. always just be like in your head. <laughs> yeah. So like for me, actually, like like pandemic and stuff, like hasn't really been that bad because I'm like, so I just get to disappear into a cave and write songs every day. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. I, I wish I wish my like I'm in my little home studio room, like not my I'm not at, at my actual studio. This is my one at home. But I really wanted to make the door actually be behind like a hidden bookshelf so it was like a like a lair you know what i mean and and i i always wanted to have like an evil like an like an evil bad guy lair and i, I my dream is that i can pull back a bookshelf and then in here will be like a couple of bunsen burners and like a map of the world with like tax in it with string like connecting a whole bunch of things like just wild conspiracy things that's my dream for my home studio room i'm not there yet but that's the dream that would be so sick. that would be sick I love it in the studio. Oh. In the studio, yeah, absolutely. So, did you guys find? Did you guys find like when when we were working together? Did you guys find like was that process quite a bit different than the way you normally? Because like we kind of wrote as a unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Josh, you were like proud. You were one of our very first co-writes because we were always just like writing separately but together. Yeah, I think we were kind of nervous about I like about bringing our creative ideas to other people. Like I think it's just like especially when you're a younger artist it's just kind of like yeah like i don't know yeah. it was just like it was nerve-wracking the idea scary. of co-writing but then it was just when we it's vulnerable writing, yeah yeah it, it is vulnerable because like you're just used to having this process be completely internalized and just the idea of bringing yeah. it out 
and sharing it is is a little scary at first but when we started with you like we were just so comfortable like we just all vibed really well creatively and it was really great like just so like i don't mean easy but it was just like it really flowed very easily um yeah 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 we, and I, we all just kind of like got along easy, like right away kind of thing um and i think that like just made it fun i think we were just having fun going to work you know and that's always a good thing i hate those writing sessions the writing sessions when like the song and this never has happened with us but like I've been on other sessions where like you're trying to get there to a song and no one can agree on anything. And just like, you, you know, you work for a week and you don't have anything to show for it. Uh, those, those can be so frustrating. It's such a vibe kill, <laughs> yeah. but like, I just, I feel like, I feel like we all just kind of got along really well. And, and it was just sort of like, uh, I think that, I think the writing space always needs to be a safe place where, where everyone always feels, um, like no one's gonna laugh at them or no idea is stupid, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's really important that everyone feels that sort of um, comfortability and security in, in a, any sort of creative environment. And I think I think that was really great with us. I mean, obviously you guys are like that with each other already. Um, and I, I thought you guys were uh, very nice and welcome, welcoming me into the, the writing circle. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. awesome, that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. It was it was good. It was, it was really, and we, we got the songs done so quickly too. Like they just kind of yeah. came yeah, out I can't believe like, it. and they're just, they're, they're so great. Like I'm very, I'm so proud of them on this record. Like just feel so, so happy and grateful. Yeah. They awesome. Yeah. So, and what about the, what about the other producers you guys worked with? Um, we also worked with Jared Manirka, uh, and Kevin. Very Mark. dear old friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. And they're super amazing too. And like the songs we wrote them, I mean, we tried to make all the songs kind of similar so they'd all fit on the same record, but I feel like they all kind of have their own flair. Like, yeah. if you're really listening oh, yeah, sure. to that they're, that they're like a little different, but they, I feel like they all mix well on a record, you know? Yeah, like I feel like- Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, I think, um, I, I found this with my stuff too. I think uh, really, if you're, as long as you're within the same ballpark, um, I mean, jumping around stylistically, I personally like, love that and and like i think like showing people variety is cool and as long as you have a distinct enough voice which you guys both do that's always the through line like it's still going to sound like you guys but you guys this part didn't change like the other stuff around it may change and like how you how you frame your voices may change but it's still the center of it's always going to be your voices so i think like you guys have a lot of leeway to play around as much as you want to yeah yeah no i, I totally agree i always find it more interesting too if a record kind of moves around a bit you know like mm -hmm. it's just it's cool to hear artists do like different things and stuff yeah. and like kind of stylistically different on the record like we're even talking about yeah totally record we kind of think that we may want to do like a bit more singer songwriter stuff as well as well as yeah kind of, kind of like mix it a little bit more yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mean um uh you know, I think of some artists that like just really don't give a fuck about about genres in a way that I totally respect. Like uh, Kesha, fucking jumps all over the place. For example, <laughs> she'll be like, you know, she had one record where it's like, here's here's a song that's kind of country song, and then here's a song for the club, and then here's a like, she just kind of like does whatever the fuck she wants to, in in like the best way possible. Yeah, I feel like Miley Cyrus does that too. Yes, she like, did on this. Yeah, song. she does. Yeah. yeah. Again, like with her, she's got such a distinct voice that like you're still going to recognize that it's her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's just funny. So I, actually, kind of as a joke, um, you know, the actor Jeff Goldblum from like Jurassic Park and all that shit. Um, so he put out he randomly put out a jazz record playing. I guess he's also a jazz piano player. And my wife gave it to me thinking it would be like kind of funny, like the silly Jeff Goldblum record. And then I put it on, it was actually really good, and he's a wicked piano player. But randomly on there, one of the songs is featuring Miley Cyrus, and it's it's total, like, old-school jazz. Um, and she sounds great singing jazz. Like, she sounds wicked in that universe. And you're kind of like, Miley, what? This is a party in the USA. <laughs> um, but uh, she sounds great doing it. Oh, my gosh, yeah, I love her. She's, like, I'm, like, she could sound good singing anything. Like, I just, her voice yes. is so good. good. ABC song. Yeah, it was yeah I agree. But, yeah, um... So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can we can end it here. Like, yeah. um, it's just it's too really bad that we're having I know. Such Sorry about all the difficulties. Hey, it's no one's fault. We just had like, like I said, the internet was fucking against us. I know. I know. It really was. But hey, you know, I'm really glad we got to have this chat, and 
yeah, like we're so stoked. Let's let's write more songs together. Yeah, yeah I can't <laughs> wait. And congrats again on uh, on the release of your EP, guys. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so excited for you. And uh, I just I think you guys are going to have such a great journey. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Josh. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Yes, Robert Downey does do jazz.